reptilian figure. When you look at the ancient gods of the Indus Valley, they talk about the Nagas, the gods who, wait for it, had the ability to manifest as human or manifest as reptiles. This is absolutely vital to understanding parts of the Arizona interview because she has experienced exactly this. And the background to what's happening is quite simple. This three-dimensional world that we appear to live in is only one frequency, one dimension of existence. We have a frequency range which we can perceive. We call them the physical senses. But outside of that range are other frequencies, other dimensions of existence and life that are sharing the same space that we are. Um, in the space that my body is occupying now, for instance, um, are all the radio and television frequencies broadcasting to London. I can't see them, they can't see each other, they're not aware of each other because they're on different frequencies. Um, only when the frequencies become very close do we have what we call interference on the television or interference on the radio. And it's the same with creation. We live in conscious terms in this three-dimensional world. So this is our reality, this is what we perceive. But there are other dimensions. And the one closest to this is the fourth dimension. And staggering as it may seem, and you really have to read The Biggest Secret to see the immense supporting evidence for this, a reptilian race from this fourth dimension is the source or one of the key sources of the manipulation of this world. Uh, back in the ancient world, again documented endlessly in so many parts of the world in ancient texts and legends and accounts, uh, are the stories of how this extraterrestrial race interbred with humanity creating hybrid bloodlines. And when you do the genealogical research, you find that it is these human reptile hybrid bloodlines that actually have occupied the major positions of power through the history of the last few thousand years and today are in the key positions of power running the banking system, the business system, the politics, the military, etc. And Arizona Wilder, who had no idea of all this other information coming towards me and researching The Biggest Secret, when I met her, she said uh, and told me about how at various satanic rituals involving the most famous people in the world, um, she had seen them again and again turn into reptile figures and then come back again uh, during the ritual. I got a call from the head of an organization in America called Parents Against Ritual Abuse um, who told me again um, from her experience how many of her clients who had been uh, subjected to satanic ritual had reported the same story of how the participants had shape-shifted, as uh, the term goes, from human to reptiles and back again during the ritual. And one of the key um, areas, one of the key families identified by Arizona Wilder um, in her accounts is one not too far from here, and it's very famous indeed. And that family and that bloodline live here, or at least partly live here, Buckingham Palace, one of the many palaces and homes of the British royal family, the House of Windsor. Um, they're seen as bastions of the establishment, the British establishment, but in fact, uh, the Windsor bloodline is not British at all, it's German. It's really the house of Saxe-Coburg-Gotha. And on Prince Philip's side, um, the husband of the Queen of England, he's a uh, Mountbatten, which is really Battenberg. Again, another German line. In 1917, they changed the name from uh, Battenberg to Mount Batten, from the House of saxe coburg to Windsor, because at that time, you may recall, the German nation and the British nation were knocking hell out of each other in the trenches of northern France. And it was good PR from the British Royal Pamley's point of view to just change their name to sound more English. And this is just the, the farce and the facade uh, behind so much, uh, or behind which so much goes on. However, most people, if not almost everyone on the planet, would find the fact that the House of Windsor are one of these 
reptilian human hybrid lines that shape shift between human and reptilian form to be utterly devastatingly ludicrous and unbelievable I understand that but the truth the real truth often is and Arizona Wilder in the interview that's coming up now is going to talk about her experiences of seeing this happen well I think that's all you need to know and uh, appreciate to understand the kind of information that uh, Arizona uh, Wilder is going to reveal to us now except one thing across the millennium years is crunch time in this whole agenda crunch time for the human race this is the time when this network of interbreeding bloodlines wants to bring in its global fascist structure of a world government to which nation states would be administrative units um, of a world central bank and a world currency a, a currency that wouldn't be cash it would be merely electronic for which there are fundamental implications for human freedom and also the world army which is designed to be NATO um, expanding and expanding as it is now of course to become the fully fledged world army world police force and underpinning that little lot is designed to be a microchip population in which we are microchip with our financial details our medical details etc etc um, and that would allow not only electronic tagging people knowing where we are all the time it would allow the external manipulation through this electronic means of our mental and emotional processes this will happen unless the human race wakes up and wakes up fast and to do that we need to understand what's really going on and to let people know that we've got to stop beating about the bush stop pulling punches stop pussyfooting around keeping information from people oh my goodness how will they react and just say this is going on take it or leave it make of it what you will but this is what's going on and some of the information you're going to hear now is quite horrific but if we don't know about it what can we do to stop it and to change it I spoke to Arizona Wilder in Los Angeles and this is what she had to say Arizona, can we start at the beginning and, and uh, can you tell us the story of, of, of what's happened in your life from, from the very start? Um, okay, what, what I can tell you is that um, be, before I started looking into my life, um, back in 1989, I, I was starting to have flashes of things and my life it was not what it, it seemed to be which is why I started looking into it and um, what I found out was that I had a lot of missing time um, and a whole lot of missing time um, as to what 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 had occurred in my life and when I started looking into what had happened in my life it, it was the only way that I at the time that I knew was to start going to see a therapist within a year um, I was talking about um, memories of being sexually abused by my father which was part of what was it was supposed to happen and um, I was talking then starting to talk about uh, mind control issues and um, I was talking about ritual abuse issues at the time and I didn't have the whole thing put together it's taken me years all these years it's taken approximately almost 10 years to put this together uh, what has happened to me and in the process I have lost everything in that that I ever had in my life and anything I held dear in my life um, I was bred for this role that I fulfill and it was planned from before my birth and it was because of my the bloodline of my mother's family which comes down um, through Ireland but before that is it began in, in France there it was the through the Marquis de Stock which he came to Ireland and um, changed the name to Stack and um, then I was chosen and I from what 
um, the birth was 